Hi, it's so nice to be here. It's February since I've been with a crowd. I notice that I'm down to be speaking for the future. I don't really think I'm qualified to speak for the future. The topic I'd suggested was eating for the future. It's something we do every day, and I do believe that by making conscious choices, we can do better for ourselves, better for our country, and better for our planet. You are what you eat. This is what we're told. So, according to recent, a recent dietary survey here in Australia, as an older Australian, that makes me 20% junk. For you, as uh, the average Australian adult, sorry to say, it makes you about 30% junk. And if any of you here are teenagers, you are an amazing 40% junk. We know that agriculture, we're told, the way we're doing agriculture in many places is contributing to greenhouse gas emissions. It's consuming lots of fresh water. We're losing topsoil at terrible rates. And yet we take this food and we turn it into empty calories that's not good for our health, not good for our own health, and it's contributing to making our planet sick. We are an amazing species. As modern humans, we've walked this Earth for just over 200,000 years, and for most of this time, we have walked lightly. We moved with the seasons, we went in search of food, and maybe a better climate or a better weather. And it was only around 10,000 years ago that we started to practice sedentary agriculture. That was a monumental change. Instead of us going to our food, we stayed where we wanted to be and wanted food to come to us. Uh, clearly, as hard-working postgraduate students, you're very glad that you don't have to produce your own food, so it does have its upside. But as we've just heard, over the last 200 years, intensification of the way we do almost everything has increased. With the Industrial Revolution, labor moved into the cities, so agriculture had to become more mechanized. And since that time, the loss of topsoil, as we have tilled the soil but not taken care of it, that has increased. Since the Second World War, following the innovation, the technological and engineering innovations of war were repurposed into agriculture and other ways of living. We know that this intensification, while it's led to some benefits, has greatly impacted on the health of our planet. I'd like to suggest that this doesn't have to be the end of the story, that it is possible for us to think each day and to make a positive contribution. I'd like us to think about three particular questions. One is, how do we nourish ourselves without harming the environment? How do we help farmers and fishers to transition to more sustainable ways of producing our food and creating the policy environments that mean that those people can sustain their own livelihoods, take care of their own families? And how can we drive change at a global level to think and to do our food systems differently? So to that first question, how do we nourish ourselves? It is about knowing you. You need to know yourself, not just as an older person, not just as an average Australian, but who are you? What age are you? What's your gender? Are you pregnant? Are you getting older? Do you have some illness? Each of these things impact on what you need to eat. A particular group that I'd like to focus on are women of reproductive age. I have to say, I'm trained as a vet, and I'm constantly shocked at how badly we treat one of the most important components of this particular animal population. It is women that is, brings the next generation, that nourishes the next generation. And yet, it's often women that don't seem to have access or be given a chance to think about what we really need to nourish ourselves well. And I say that because 
the female of the human species, are quite unique. Compared to most other animals that I work with as a veterinarian, none of them menstruate. And yet, women of reproductive age generally menstruate. That puts an incredible toll on your body, and it means you need to eat to replenish what you're losing. It's also frequently young women and some young men who are very worried about our world, very worried that what we're eating is killing our planet. And we're getting information that it's better to have a plant-based diet in order to reduce our impact on the world. Well, in my opinion, if we were all sheep, that would be a great idea. So sheep are designed to eat plants. They take fibrous material, they grind it up with their teeth, it goes through this incredible stomach with billions of microbes, and then it passes into intestines. And your average sheep, which is more or less can be around at the same weight as us, but their intestines are 25 meters long. So it means that as the food passes through their body, it's got all that time to take all the nutrients out, to take that water out, so they are incredibly efficient. Would any of you like to think about how long are the intestines of uh, the adult human? Any ideas? Our intestines are around six meters, so that's less than one quarter of a sheep. And what it means is, for the time that the nutrients, the food is passing through our body, we do need to have better quality food. Otherwise, we have to eat a lot. And so with studies on carrying capacity that's been done, it's revealed that diets that are ovo-vegetarian or ovo-lacto-vegetarian are incredibly efficient in the United States, certainly more efficient and can nourish more people than the vegan diet, and even the vegan diet is much better than the average diet in the US. So that's data coming out of the US, suggesting that in terms of carrying capacity, not only just thinking about greenhouse gas emission, but thinking about water and nutrients and how you use your land. When we come to Australia, and if we're thinking about what we need to do here in Australia, there's not a lot of information for us. A lot of the material we read comes from the US, it comes from Europe. The US, for instance, has 19% arable land. 19% of the land can be used to grow crops, to grow plants, and to feed people sustainably. Here in Australia, how much arable land do we have? Well, not as much as we used to have. We've put houses on a lot of it, and we have, we're using around 6% of our land. So we may be a big country, but we don't have a lot of land for growing, raising crops. We do have a lot of rangeland. And if we manage that rangeland better, it could be used not only, as Charlie Massey shared in a TEDx event here in Canberra in 2018, so excellent regenerative practices can pull carbon down into the soil, can improve soil health, and we can also then use some of the, the produce for um, things like wool and for meat. So if we're thinking of how do we manage land here in Australia? For those of you who eat, who do eat animal meat, how much of that carcass do you think actually goes into the human food chain? This animal makes the ultimate sacrifice for us. How much are we using? 80%? 70%? 60%? 50%? Sorry to say, it's less than 50% when that Cattle beast or that sheep goes into an abattoir, less than 50% of that carcass is going into the human food chain. And not only are we losing 50% of the animals, we're losing really bioavailable micronutrients, minerals, and omega-3 fatty acids. Some of the key elements that we need are being lost. So where's it going? These are questions that we need to ask if that's our choice in the way we'd like to be able to run fewer animals but get the same nutrient yield. In terms of moving to caring for our planet, it's the same theme of having our eye on nutrients. It's not about pricing the weight or the volume of food. 
It's about pricing the nutrients that are in there, the environmental impact of producing that food. We do need to have circular food economies. Really, really important. This is a very brief introduction to a huge topic, but I really do believe that if we take time to think about who we are, what we do each day, that we can support farmers and fishers who care for their land, who are proud of what they produce, we can engage with our politicians, and most importantly, we can actually eat well, make ourselves healthier, and give our planet a chance. Thank you.